If anyone had told Oli Bongo, the former president of Gabon, that one day he would join the ranks of African presidents who were ousted from office, he would have probably laughed at them. In fact, with so much confidence, Bongo said, while our continent has been shaken in recent weeks by violent crises, rest assured that I will never allow you and our country, Gabon, to be hostages to attempts at destabilization. Never, unfortunately, on Wednesday, August 30, President Oli Bongo woke up to find himself under house arrest by military forces and accused of unpredictable, irresponsible governance as well as embezzlement and corruption. Sitting in a richly carpeted room, Oli Bongo spoke rather pitifully, saying, I don't know what's going on, and pleaded with his friends from the international community to make noise. What could have given Bongo such confidence in the face of the widespread military coups? It's probably the fact that his family has ruled Gabon for more than 50 years. However, that was not enough to protect him because, like other African countries ruled by dictators, the people had had enough of Bongo's continued exploitation, and the military took advantage of this. This is not the first time that the military has attempted a coup. Early in 2019, while Bongo was recuperating from a stroke that had kept him from his presidential duties, the military attempted to overthrow his government, but they were unsuccessful as they were caught and quickly arrested. One of the most notable characteristics of the Bongo family rule in Gabon was corruption coupled with complete control of the resources in Gabon, resulting in them living an extremely lavish lifestyle. Recall that Gabon is a sparsely populated country with just 2 million people that has an abundance of oil, producing 181,000 barrels of crude oil a day, making it the eighth largest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa as well as an important member of the OPEC grouping. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, Gabon's oil export revenue was $6 billion in 2022. This means the country's resources are more than enough to cater to the needs of the people. Despite this, a considerable number of the population lives in poverty, and approximately 40% of persons aged 15 to 24 are unemployed. In contrast, Gabon's oil reserves have enriched its rulers. Bongo is one of the richest presidents in Africa and has been associated with extravagance and an opulent lifestyle that has attracted international attention. During his recent presidential campaign for a third term, he sported a white suit by Vinci worth roughly $2,000, which is more than half the country's minimum wage in Gabonese currency. In addition, four months after Oli first took office, a leaked document revealed that his office had purchased 29 expensive automobiles worth 12.8 million euros through a Swiss company. Two Maybox 62S valued at 420,000 euros each, two Rolls Royce Phantoms at 370,000 euros each, and two Rolls Royce Ghosts at 227,000 euros each were part of the deal. Four years later, the head of Gabon's public spending watchdog, Jean Fidelie Otendalt stated that half of the state's budget had simply vanished when probing the country's lack of cash. According to government insiders, the president enjoyed taking the high-speed vehicles for joyrides in the desert while his security accompanied him. But this was not the beginning of the family's wealth. The Bongo family's wealth started when Oli's father, Omar Bongo, took office in 1967 at age 31. Omar came to power peacefully in a post-colonial period when other West African countries were going through conflict or successive coups. His family had a strong relationship with former colonial power France, and he kept power by concentrating the country's natural wealth under his control, investing some in large-scale infrastructure projects, and rewarding political opponents with lucrative positions in his government. By the time he died of heart arrest in a Barcelona hospital at the age of 73, Omar had grown so adept at retaining power that no one in the country had the authority to declare him dead. Throughout his 42 years in office, Omar accumulated astounding wealth, including 70 bank accounts and an array of luxurious possessions, such as 39 apartments, two Ferraris, six Mercedes-Benz cars, three Porsches, and even a Bugatti in France. After Omar died, Oli Bongo, 
the scion of Gabon's ruling family, continued in his father's footsteps, weaving a narrative that intertwines luxury and power throughout his 14 years in power. His signature look consists of designer suits that are frequently accessorized with silk ties and bespoke elements. This opulence extended to even the most solemn occasions, such as King Charles's coronation, where he wore a luxury wedding suit and his wife, Sylvia Bongo Ondimba, wore an ornate white skirt suit covered with silver and gold embroidery. Bongo's opulence is further heightened by his collection of high-end automobiles, which includes rare luxury vehicles such as Mercedes, Maybox, and Rolls Royces. Notably, he appears in public on occasion wearing the pricey Moroccan Jabado clothing, which is generally reserved for wealthy folks in Morocco or Algeria. According to some estimates, Ali Bongo personally controls billions of dollars in assets, much of which is hidden abroad, making him Gabon's richest man. Bongo's sister, Pascaline Bongo, is also not left out of this luxurious lifestyle. She reportedly accrued an $86 million luxury air travel bow within two years. Aside from the properties the Bongos have amassed, they have also reportedly stashed billions of Naira in foreign countries, especially the US and France, according to the OCCRP. The OCCRP also disclosed that the Bongos and their inner circle including a judge who has been instrumental in helping the family hang on to power, have purchased at least seven properties worth over 4.2 million US dollars near the US capital. In addition, the OCCRP investigation concerning the Bongo family revealed that the late President Omar Bongo carried $1 million in shrink-wrapped $100 bills to the United States and gave it to his jobless daughter, Yemily Bongo STA. When questioned, the unemployed university student said she expected further money from her father to purchase a $2.2 million condo in New York City. She also confirmed that she bought luxury vehicles for Gabonese officials in the U.S. at her father's request. This accumulation of wealth exclusive to the president, his family, and the inner circle is popularly referred to as the Bongo system in the country's capital, Libreville, and has drawn a lot of criticism and condemnation. The open exhibition of such excess, combined with the refusal to settle the bill, highlighted the disparity between the tyrants' lives and the grave economic hardships experienced by many Gabonese civilians. Not surprisingly, when the Gabonese military broke into Bongo's house, they found bags filled with money in different currencies, including the euro, dollar, and CFA franc. It's no surprise, therefore, that when the military took over in Gabon, hundreds of people took to the streets of the capital, dancing, cheering, and declaring themselves free. The affluent lifestyles of Oli Bongo and his family continue to serve as stark reminders of the complex character of leadership within a continent seeking progress and equal resource distribution. Thankfully, the coup has succeeded in ending the 55-year reign of the Bongo family in Gabon. What do you think? Do leave your comments down below and don't forget to like, subscribe and put on the notification if you haven't already done so.